on this show we talk about stories of uh, political and human interests that affect us as nigerians and also as members of a global human community today we'll be discussing the proposed removal of president muhammad Buhari from office by lawmakers should he be removed is it possible is it realizable or are the lawmakers just uh, grandstanding and uh, well we have been told that uh, you know the process is laughable by minister of information and culture uh, Lai mohammed but to guide us through this it's a great pleasure to have as our guest on this show today mr chijoke ukole senior advocate of nigeria chijoke ukole SAN is the founding partner and chief counsel at Delhi Law Advisory at the Don Montfort University United Kingdom. He is primarily also the uh, lead counsel uh, at uh, Ilo and Okoli Chambers. He has had very extensive involvement in commercial litigation for more than 50, 25 years in trial and appellate courts. Also, with significant experience in white collar criminal prosecution and defense, as well as arbitration. He is also the leading sports and entertainment lawyer in Nigeria, if I may say so. Uh, for the past five years, he has been uh, very busy in the area of capacity building and pioneering endeavors in sports and entertainment law. Uh, in Nigeria, you know, we just got a chance to bring him onto this program before he goes off to Birmingham uh, to be part of the Commonwealth Games in uh, Birmingham, uh, you know, as the leading uh, sports lawyer in Nigeria. Chiyoko Kuli obtained his celebrity Bachelor of Law, Civil Law in 1987, and since then he has made significant contribution to legal practice in Nigeria. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria, as I told you. If you want to be part of this conversation, you can call us on 0700-151-1051. Again, I take that. 0700-1051-1051. You can also leave comments on our WhatsApp number 09099 one six double four zero three and on our social media accounts at city one zero five one on zoom instagram and facebook and let me use this opportunity to apologize for the hitch last week because last week the program couldn't go uh, go on so problem with technology problem of uh, you know connection and all that but i hope our engineers will learn to uh, sort that out so that when i'm not available to be physically in the studio they will still be able to go ahead uh, with the program first let me welcome our guest uh, chijuke ukoli san who i see is already with us on the uh, on the screen chiyoke ukuli i say and thank you very much for accepting our invitation and for joining us thank you very much ruben it's my pleasure okay <clears throat> okay i was talking about the plant removal of the president yes. president muhammad Buhari, from office yes by members yes. of the national assembly and uh, you had said, look, this yes. matter is not as clear as it may appear. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Um, it is maybe it's not so clear. Uh, also, bearing uh, matter is a cumbersome procedure, especially in the context of uh, the Nigerian presidency being as so many people have rightly pointed out the most powerful presidency in the world uh, let me give you an example it will be easier for you to go against to 
anything that you want to remove or I'm coming to that terminological, uh, if I will say terminological inexactitude in the sense that we borrowed from the United States, but as a significant difference in the sense that we keep speaking of impeachment, which is a peculiarly an American position. It's not exactly the same thing in Nigeria. So sometimes, even if it's been accepted, we talk about impeachment. What the Constitution actually says the removal. But having said that, it is easier for you to censure and uh, force a president of the United States out of the office than you would uh, the president of Nigeria, not only in terms of the jury, but also, but most importantly, de facto. So when we talk so glibly about uh, removal of the president, uh, the president, or as some people would uh, say, impeachment. Um, generally speaking, it's more that in the books, uh, as a pra- not just a practitioner of law, but as a student of uh, history and political science um, and the structure of Nigeria. Quite honestly, I'll tell you off the cuff that it is, you know, more than an opaque uh, task. And no- let nobody tell me. Uh, I will preempt. Let nobody tell me uh, the example of the state governors. It's it's practically the same thing in the sense that you have to use the, it has to be initiated by the uh, legislature of whether the state or the federation. But we are talking of a completely different uh, thing. The governor of a state is nowhere, even in relative terms, so for those of us uh, in boxing will say, pound for pound who is the best pound for pound even taking into consideration their places the president is a far 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 you know stronger position than the governor uh, is uh, for those who may not be so uh, you know uh, uh, conversant with this expression which is a peculiarly boxing one when they try to say oh who's a better boxer pound for pound well you say this heavy weight yes you beat this light weight but if we check it on a weighted average, this lightweight is a much better boxer, you know, where you use all the parameters. But by the same token, a heavyweight uh, like Muhammad Ali, who t- tell you uh, the, 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 the greatest of all times, he has a lot of people who say that. So it's not just saying that the president occupies relatively a bigger position. The peculiarities of the office of the president in Nigeria puts him in an almost impregnable position. So uh, that's that's the that's just the truth of the matter. So, but um, it would be good for us at least to educate ourselves to look at the, you know uh, you know talk around you know some of these uh, provisions. But that's part of what I you know mean by saying it's not that uh, so clear uh, because uh, 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 you know we look at uh, section one forty three of the constitution. That is the one that actually talks about removal of the president from office. Um, if I may, specifically says under section 1431, the president or vice president may be removed from office in accordance with the provisions of this section. And then it suffices for us to go further to find out what uh, those provisions are. And in the uh, uh, subsection 2 it goes on to say whenever a notice of any allegation in writing signed by not less, less than one third of the members of the National Assembly is presented to the President of the Senate stating that the holder that is A is presented to the President of the Senate B stating that the holder of the office of president or vice president is guilty of gross misconduct in the performance of the functions of his office. Detailed particulars of which shall be specified. Then the president of the Senate shall within seven days of the receipt of the notice cause a copy thereof to be served on the holder of the office. So what we even see here is that it's not just the Senate or it is the National Assembly, the one third. So you, you need a concurrence of the uh, of the uh, both National Assembly 
you know, unlike let's say when you're doing impeachment in the United States, it is even though it is initiated by the House of uh, Reps and uh, Representatives, uh, the main uh, theater, the Senate now constitutes itself in some more or less a court to look into the matter. Uh, but here, the whole thing, you know, uh, it's a joint uh, affair of the National Assembly, you know, um, you know, and then. Um, if uh, the uh, audience may not mind uh, going more details into the leg days, he says that um, the president of the Senate shall, within seven days of the receipt of the notice, cause a copy thereof to be served on the holder of the office and on each member of the National Assembly, and shall also cause any statement made in reply to the allegation by the holder of the office to be served on each member of the National Assembly. You know, it goes on. It is a fairly convoluted uh, process. Then within 14 days of the presentation of the notice to the President of the Senate, whether or not any statement was made by the holder of the office in reply to the allegation contained in the notice, each House of the National Assembly shall resolve by motion without any debate whether or not the allegation shall be investigated. So here we see potential uh, bomb, booby traps so that even when you're able to master the one third to initiate the process, when you go to each of these national assembly, uh, you know, uh, after, you know, we see 14 days when they should uh, debate whether they should even investigate it in the first place or not. Uh, you know, and he says, it goes for that. A motion of the National Assembly that the allegation be investigated shall not be declared as having been passed unless it is supported by the votes of not less than two thirds majority of all the members of each house of the National Assembly. <laughs> by the time you'll be able to get uh, with all the uh, fault lines we have in the country ethnic and sectional divide uh, the uh, religious divide so in real terms i think it will be you know extremely difficult to get uh, to that proceeding so it is that the paper it is good for us to know how it is but uh, quite honestly Ruben, i don't uh, really see it being carried up. okay and um, um let me give you a yeah yeah um, uh, just a little analogy. When the the uh, NSAS the NSAS uh, riot or well the the the, the NSAS, uh, agitation, if we call it riot like Aba, like the British who characterized the Aba women's uprising and call it an, a, a, a riot, you know, to the degree that this NSAS agitation, when it is to be gathering steam and um, the police i mean had been behaving awfully then all of a sudden we had some northern governors and some people and now i turned it i say oh to move back a man from the office that will not have presentation by the youths so i can't see uh, uh, any of that uh, you know uh, happening and then um, again i was watching on television uh, some days ago when some of these issues came up, and Senator Adelaide was uh, proudly saying how they helped to uh, short circuit the attempted impeachment or proposed impeachment or removal by, of office of General Obasa, regardless that they are members of the opposition, but for the very fact that uh, uh, it is their kinsman, the Yoruba person, that uh, was about to be uh, removed, is instructive that uh, the people who went through the night and started a good alliance were not. Uh, we are not uh, his uh, party men, but uh, members of the AD. So these are the realities on ground that, you know, when we, when we have this, and uh, like somebody said okay. during uh, Jonathan Stein, that even if it's a good, it's our own good, living for us. Okay. <laughs> well, Chiki, okay. Yeah. SAN, I get your argument about how stringent the conditions in Section 143 are. And why it yeah. may be difficult for ethnicity, uh, regional, and uh, um, you know other reasons why it may be difficult uh, to remove a president of Nigeria. However, 
you try to make a distinction between impeachment and removal from office. Section 143 yeah. of the Nigerian Constitution, which deals with this matter, talks about removal from office. In the U.S., yes. impeachment does not necessarily lead to removal. As we saw, yeah. for example, in the case of uh, Clinton. Clinton. Bill Clinton. Clinton. Okay, so can you help us explain the essential difference that there is, you know, impeachment uh, is not the same thing as removal from office. But Nigeria talks about removal from office in section 143. Yes. You see, usually, you know, because maybe the American system is, uh, will I say, more delicate, uh, if I use the street language, we are, uh, they have more shame than us. The very fact, the, the, the impeachment proceedings, as it were, um, in the United States House of uh, House of Representatives, when they debate and find out that a prima facie case has been made against you, You have become impeached because it's like uh, like impeachment of character. You are charged. You haven't, strictly speaking, you haven't really been convicted because in the United States case, the Senate now becomes like a de facto court where the members of the National Assembly of the House of Reps in the United States now goes to make out the case against you in the united states that's why like in clinton's case they now voted and uh, he got you know uh, got off by the skin of his tooth but in the, in the nigerian case it doesn't have that um, um you know it doesn't have those uh, uh you know uh, that distinction it's, it's clear how you'll be removed and as a matter of fact beyond 143 145 actually now talks about um, another form which probably in my view is um, uh, you can't well on a on a on a on a, on a uh, condition on a particular so to speak because this thing talks about gross misconduct because I want us to even add back to that in I don't know what the president uh, exactly what the National Assembly say because if you're saying the distinction of what is the definition of gross misconduct, because most often than not, because the president has immunity, if he does something that otherwise would constitute a crime, then you can go this route and say gross misconduct. You know, because, or, well, the uh, breach, because um, uh, the constitution defines gross misconduct, a grave violation or breach of the provisions of this constitution or misconduct of such nature as amounts in the opinion of the National Assembly to gross misconduct. Usually the normal cause of event. A criminal offense would, would I argue uh, on a reasonable ground would amount to uh, cause that threshold that is ought to be in the opinion of the National Assembly. Then the grave violation or breach of the constitution of of this constitution okay on that point with what they are saying the president in my view has been so 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 abysmally remiss in his fundamental duty of uh, uh you know securing us that is the first nature that is the first and uh, 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 fundamental duty of government and um it is uh, it is common knowledge that nigeria has never been this unsafe and i'm sure the older people uh, who can visibly think of what had happened during the civil war that within the federal side let me not talk about the the uh Biafran and clay enclave during the war but certainly during the uh or the those on the federal side life was going on and nowhere as safe as it is all over nigeria so i think on a flexible interpretation we said that um you know, there has been an, uh, an abdication of the duty of the fundamental duty of government which is security of lives and property so to this extent 
ordinarily if we take aside all these hotlines that are already addressed upon the uh, the president uh, would uh, there be very very serious serious case about um, you know removing him from office he's been uh, capable even his best uh, supporters uh, early this morning i saw what uh, uh, the very the the, uh, the the very articulated job uh, spokesperson of arewa uh, elders uh, hakim baba he said this is my personal opinion it is clear this thing is beyond you we step aside let some other person that do it yes well so in, in, in some other yeah. in some other jurisdictions when a president is under siege like this lawmakers saying this president is not doing what he should do he has to go the ordinary people saying oh this president has contravened the laws uh senators and um, you know lawmaker other lawmakers say oh we we have a good cause under section 143 of the constitution what next indeed when he was faced with this kind of uh, uh, you know a terrible situation in 1974 was that richard nixon resigned as president of yes, uh, really. the, the united states do you see the possibility yes. of president buhari uh, resigning even now that he had said before now that he's even tired he wants to go is he likely to resign i would be pleasantly surprised if he did you see but for me what i i think is that we are in such grave unprecedented danger we are moving into such uncharted territory and i think a lot of discerning people appreciate the gravity the enormity of the situation we are in i would uh, make re uh, recollect uh, the famous uh, phrase uh, some other people may have used it but i think it was uh, dele momodu who brought it into popular usage you know nigerian lexicon about the owners of the country for me former heads of state and people of undoubted stature whether you like them or not uh or Basanjo, dan juma uh abdul salam maybe gerard Gowan, and uh, some leaders of the faith like the sultan they, it, it, it will carry a lot more weight if they sit down and agree and then I speak to the president with a view to for him to step down because for me in the national assembly um they are very powerful but in relative terms they are not that influential <laughs> power if you get what i mean the, the distinction i'm trying to uh, draw and again i have back to the insightful um views of uh, senator Adele when he came on Ogulewe uh, when he came to um, on telly he said they made ovations to the sultan and the uh, the Sarkin Kano because to call it uh, Naba Gale Naba to order uh, you know to call him to you know hold him on the leash and uh, relatively they also uh, they look at uh, the ranking traditional rulers in the east to uh, call like a pious signing and everything and then it worked like a treat so for me if the national assembly is uh, saying that he will step down and everything quite honestly knowing what i know of nigeria uh between uh, a man too much and guess what most of the people in national assembly have skeletons in their cupboard if they mean to say it seriously all you need is to uh, you know some very similarly not cause uh, invitation by the ELCC and then uh, maybe some uh, some allowances that you took that they would read look at the fine details and tell you that maybe you're not entitled to take those uh, something and you need to answer query and uh, when he put it that that would just take this in out but um relative relatively speaking the owners of nigeria <laughs> as a uh, as a uh, daily moment to put they seem to a certain degree to be built from uh, some of those uh, things so if they should be able to have that consensus and i think they should that thing should be in the conversation to say 
Okay. It's not a question of a personal thing whether we like him or not. The country is bigger. So when they talk to him and tell him to step down, it is clear that the the uh, is uh, you know uh, he doesn't quite. Uh, okay. Two quick things. Okoli uh, yeah. Two quick yeah. things. Okoli yeah. uh, yeah. When you were mentioning yeah. the owners of Nigeria, uh, you left out uh, my former boss, um, uh, Doctor Goodluck Ebele Jonathan. Oh, uh, president of Nigeria, uh, are you saying that he's not one of the owners of Nigeria because he's from uh, no, uh, no. the south south? Because no, you no, listed I, only I, I, people, I, I, only other people. You didn't mention his name. Was that deliberate? It's not deliberate. Maybe it's a Freudian slip. Okay, should anybody be described no, as no. owner of Nigeria? Uh, it may not be uh, it may not be palatable but the truth of the matter which is why we come back to the uh, I when I raised it in a, my uh, political science uh, tutorial in Unilag so many years ago some people said the truth of the matter which is why I was trying to explain the, as it concerns these owners of the Nigeria you see at a group subliminal level let's be honest the Biafra war was a, a a coalition of the uh, political north, Muslim north majority, and the southwest. Without the um, uh, cooperation of both, it you wouldn't have uh, one between Biafra. So my my thesis is that somewhere in the group recesses of the group memories this is why for example i was trying to explain not necessarily justify that uh, the leading lights in the southwest when the south says our turn and our turn so the uh, when the uh, the uh, the people in the floor say is our turn like i teach you saying and then the europe has by right can say oh if this is an enterprise two of us are the major owners we have put out the third person. So this uh, it is it may be hard to swallow, but it is uh, in this position, and this is not the time to explain my thesis. But by the way, my favorite uh, legal philosopher is Hans Carlson, who says basically what the law is and what it ought to be are two different things. Because it is only at, in the light of this my thesis that you can begin to understand what ordinarily we look so straightforward. But even people who, who subscribe to the concept of Omoluati will not see, oh, you've taken and you're taking again. And then uh, if you don't have, for example, an Igbo presidency now, you're pushing it that, that a whole generation will live and die, all things meaningful. You will never see that, you know. So in that, the, the, as, uh, the reality of it is that, yes, on paper, Jonathan especially his, his statementliness in the way he considered qualifies for that. But also, um, like I said, it's, a, it's probably a Fred and Slip that I forgot because as a former president of the country, he would uh, at least be a member of this club. Particularly if we have to count in uh, somebody like uh, Dan Juma, who never was the head of state or even number two. Uh, but uh, maybe this Fred and this um, knowledge may well have explained this Friday and sleep of avoiding Jonathan. But having said that, Jonathan should be part of this, you know, because uh, uh, he has international, uh, he has international uh, recognition for the way he uh, considered defeat. And we also, when we also talk about uh, uh, the owners of Nigeria, we also know the role of the international community, probably without the overarching uh, influence of, uh, of the White House, and uh, turn down the street. The the history of uh, of 2015 that brought in Buhari may have been different. So if we have the owners of Nigeria seemingly in agreement, and I think the so-called Nigerian friends uh, in the international community will get a buy. If uh, the, the president could be talked to by these uh, people to say, well. In uh, the lighting self interest of all of us, that uh, maybe you go and tend your cows, it will be a much more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sober and quieter vocation 
than uh, you know ruining this country, especially with uh, terrorist threat, you know, threatening to overrun us. So that uh, we have a more sprightly, mentally agile person that undoubtedly uh, is I mean, that's my honest opinion. Because my concern, my concern is that so many people have resigned, vast majority, including APC. People have resigned and say, okay, and they're counting down. The way things have abysmally collapsed and collapsing in this country, 2023 may be too far. That is my fear. Okay. Uh, Okole, yeah. SN, very shortly, we're going to um, start uh, taking uh, contributions from persons who are listening to us. And it's good you refer to yeah. Hans Kelsen. Uh, legal positivism. Yeah. Uh, Kelsen's yes. uh, theory of positive uh, uh, positivism. Pure, pure theory of law. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, um, what he's saying basically is that the law is, uh, you know, positivist. What the uh, yes. uh, what the uh, law makes. Morality and all those things are very positive. Uh, 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 not coming. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. But yeah. in this yeah. particular case, the lawmakers in Nigeria are saying that within six weeks the president should solve the problem of uh, of uh, insecurity in the country because he's, uh, he has both a moral and a legal obligation to do so within the purview of section 14 subsection 1 of the 1999 constitution yes. do you think that yes. there could be any difference within six weeks or that the lawmakers are grandstanding particularly now that uh, the minister of information says Oh, you know, this is laughable. And um, uh, Femi Additional says, uh, you know, a spokesperson, that this is, um, you know, the handiwork of minority of the minorities. These are anarchists. And uh, 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 Garuba Shewu says, these are babies just talking. So, you know, of what effect you know, is the move? You know, the you, national you know, for me, about the talking heads in the presidency, the minister and uh, I'm to say it, you know, the way they travelize things, I don't expect any better. I don't mean to, uh, I don't mean to humor you, Ruben. You know me, I say it the way it is. The, um, why is not detracting from your doubtless loyalty to, uh, to your principal, the president, then? We, the tone of the conversation that you brought to bear on a discussion was way, 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 way above what we're seeing here. I mean, it's more like a, my late good friend, the Ashikiwa Doneko, used to talk about the, the, the Motopak economics. When you are there, they're listening this to the Motopak, uh, you know, spokesmanship. You know, how can ordinarily members of the National Assembly raise an issue that is actually axiomatic? I mean, it's not only poor thinking, but uh, disregard to logic to look for evidence of a self-evident fact. It is self-evident that Nigeria is collapsing under the watch of the president. And then this hello as they should be. I think the order and us are all bringing this into their attention as assuming they are deaf and blind. So they will need to have said something, regardless that as nothing, in my view, may ultimately come out of it. But I think that they are obligated to raise the alarm that they have. Okay. Even though I don't think, but having said that, I think it's totally responsible. Okay, uh, Chijo Kokoli. Hello, can you hear me? To very serious driver. Yes. Yes, I can do that. Okay. I can hear you. Yeah, we seem to be having uh, a problem Hello. with the audio connection here in the studio. So we take a short break. Please stay with us. And when we return, uh, we'll bring in, uh, you know, the inputs from, uh, you know, our listeners and persons who have joined us on social media. Uh, please stay with us. Thank you very much. 
I found out the invitation will be right back in a minute. And our guest is uh, Chijoke Okoli Esen, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. And we've been talking about the proposed removal of President Muhammad Buhari from office by lawmakers, by members of the National Assembly. Remember, if you want to be part of this conversation, you can call us on 0700-1051-1051 and also on WhatsApp 90 and also on our social media accounts at City1051 on Zoom, Instagram and Facebook. Facebook. And I'm your host, Ruben Abate. And here we are. So, who is going to go first? And our guest is here, ready to take all the uh, questions and responses. Who is on the line? Please, your name, your location. And please keep it brief. Ruben Abate. Hey, B from Songo. Hey, B from Songo. You're welcome. Yeah. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for the support. Good. Well, number one, I want to say that um, uh, I think my brother has spoken well, our barrister. Um, the reason why my fear is um, why that impeachment will not take place is uh, the, uh, the National Assembly, especially the Senate, where the president of the Senate is presiding, which is uh, uh, Lawa. Why do I say so? Lawa, every, you can even imagine that every um, um, issue brought to the National Assembly, especially borrowing, it's always passing the borrowing. Yeah, well, yeah, you can go and collect. Now, today, Nigeria is the deep sea of borrowing. So, I don't expect that anything will happen. You could even remember two days ago, when I understand when they brought this uh, issue of impeachment, it was the one that is even turning me down. I think I want to say that, by, by my own opinion, that prosperity will actually judge a law. So, they should allow this one to go and rest. He's tired. Because I've seen all this that is happening. So, I think the problem we're having is. Uh, the president of his Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, what do you say to that? No, no. Clearly, clearly, you know, there's a multi uh, dimensional, uh, you know, perspective to it. I think that this uh, contributor is also quite on track because apart from all these fault lines, you're also looking at the uh, the position of the uh, presiding officers of the National Assembly, particularly uh, Lawan. I mean, is uh, you know, I I want to be respectful, but um, you know, quite honestly, he has not run the Senate other than uh, you know a lap dog of the presidency. You know, I mean, it's like the president says there should be cooperation. Quite all right. But not a slavish, uh, whatever. The president comes up and says, John, and he's like, how, how high do you want us to jump? You know, they borrowed Nigeria and borrowed us almost into extinction. When you have the National Assembly under his watch to scrutinize all these uh, senseless uh, borrowing that we do not see the need, and the chicken has come home to roost. So the contributor is very well, very much in order, you know, that at a micro level of the difficulty we have is the leadership of the national assembly particularly that of the senate in the person of lawa yes he is complicit in also the situation okay we have and, uh... if, and if and if i may add perhaps if we get the uh this uh, as i talked about the owners of nigeria so to speak they should also carry it will not be too difficult for them to go along with members of the National Assembly to talk to the president. Uh, so they will be in the audience without talking, but their very presence there will tell the president, even if they are afraid to tell him, tell truth to power, the presidential power. But if the likes of Obasanjo, Dan Juma, Abdul Salam, President Jonathan, and Yakubu Gowon carry Lawan and Agbajabi Amela in tow to go and see the president, they can keep with that, but their, pre their presence there will be that uh, or that maybe um, uh, uh, it's time for you to go. But we don't have the uh, we don't have the gumption to tell you. But these are our senior people here are telling you. 
Yes. <laughs> okay, I have some hands up here yeah. on uh, WhatsApp, uh, on Zoom. Uh, if the engineers yes. can let us have the contribution of Dr. Bode Olajumoke. Dr. Bode Olajumoke uh, on Zoom. Hello, Dr. Lajumoke, please. Hello, are the engineers following this program? Okay. Yes, sir. Good. 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 Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, sir. I, yes. I can hear you too, yes. I, I I was just congratulating you, Doctor Abati, on this uh, on this program, and I I also thank uh, the guest um, uh, speaker. For me personally, all that is important is that uh, this is the first time in the annals of uh, uh, our National Assembly that um, such a move is being made. I think that's very critical. It's for it's, it's for the records. I mean, I, um, whether they will label them as uh, rubber stamps or not, but at least some people, even from the government side, have joined, have teamed up with uh, uh, the, the the opposition to say enough is enough. How do you have a president on seat and and uh, you have this mayhem of uh, daily models? I, I read yesterday somewhere that about 6,000 northerners, northerners have been killed, you know, so far. I, I think, you know, President uh, Buhari is stained by this move. And that's, for me, is important. Whether, whether it succeeds or not, it's gone into our records, it's gone into our history that uh, a, a president once upon a time in Nigeria, a move was made to impeach him, remove him from office. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Well, uh, um, Okoli SAM, before you respond, let's take uh, mascot Ogunjemi Yo, uh, whose hand is also up there. Engineers, please, can you allow Mr. Ogunjemi Yo to make his uh, contribution? Hello? Yeah, yeah. thank you very much for, for this uh, program, and I congratulate you. Uh, my own contribution is that the president is, is is already even late to to say you are impeaching the president if if the vp takes over there is little he can do before the before the end of this administration it's already less than one year to the end of this administration if they can provide the president to resign he go honorably because it, he has not offended nigeria in any way is his, is his disposition that is that, that people are capital capitalizing on in, in 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 nigeria so resignation is is, is a better option if the man is a honorable man he's a he's a man of integrity so they, they should not disgrace him out of office for any reason uh also i want to contribute that the legislator have the power to include a clause in the constitution i have already put it in the in the chat in the constitution that will be based on performance the president is present the scorecard on quarterly basis and if he doesn't meet the target then in four quarters which is a year then they, they should impeach him so that that's that's my contribution thank you very much thank you very much we'll take another contribution via zoom uh mike i see uh, mike stand up uh if you could also allow that uh, contribution mike uh yeah. thank you ruben uh can you hear me Yes, please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Ruben, and God bless you. Um, when I look at your history from Guardian to today, if all you've been contributing to this country had been put into place, would be better than the United States of, Niger of America. That's one. Two, I hear of the owners of Nigeria. I feel sad and I feel insulted when you call these people the owners of Nigeria. They are the hijackers of Nigeria. You know, we had a time when students in Nigeria had power. They could pull down the president, they could pull down anybody. That was Ali Monsko. 
and Ali went. You know, but what happened to the uh, those voices, the voices of the youth, those are the real owners of Nigeria. I did say to one governor once in his state when the, there was so much money being lost, and I said, if you don't take care of the orphans, the youth, a time will come where they will be taking care of us. And that time has come. They are taking care of us because we can no longer drive our cars. Security is, I don't even want to talk about security. We all know about it. So they are not really owners. How do we activate the real owners of Nigeria to take responsibility and to ensure that people don't just come and enforce themselves on us? So I think it's very, very critical that we look at that aspect of governance. How do we get the use? Because we've been silenced. We've been silenced. You know, so I don't think um it's not too late to impeach the president it is not too late to impeach the president i think even if it's one day to the end of the time it needs to happen it needs to happen and this is not the nigeria where i grew up and i studied i feel sad that i don't have a country the same that taught me that trained me to hand over to my children so on uh essay sir what do we do with the nigerian school particularly even the legal system you are in you are in the legal system how many of these cases that we had that have been tried and have been sentenced we don't hear of them we hear when the cases start we don't hear when they end we don't hear when they get so you find them in parties throwing parties and all that so it, when you say it's a failing state no it's a failed state i don't think it's a failing state we have failed we have the judiciary yeah. that for me, they are not doing what they are supposed to be doing so what do you say about that thank you okay uh okoli sn i'm sure you are taking notes uh i see so many people trying to say something let's take one more and then you can respond to all the uh concerns together uh if you can have uh, a listen s i a usan is also up here on my uh, laptop in the studio Alison SIA, and I've seen him somewhere, you know, raising his hand also in the uh, video. Engineers, please, can we have uh, Alison SIA? Hello? Hello, Alison SIA. Okay, if we are having uh, issues with that, uh, there is uh, a comment here from Comrade Igbini. And I think that should be of interest to our guest, uh, uh, Comrade Igbini Emmanuel, who says that, uh, um, I'm trying to figure that out. <clears throat> who is saying that, um, okay, basically, I, I'm having issues, you know, I'm, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to some of these things. Yeah, he says, as long as Section 14 2 b of the 1999 Constitution as amended, is not justiciable no president of nigeria uh is uh, can be removed constitutionally from office based on that uh, particular uh constitution and that uh, the national assembly has uh, failed nigerians in this regard that is if they do not amend section 14 2 of that uh, constitution uh, to compel the president to declare a state of emergency uh, in uh, communities that have been uh, overtaken by bloodthirsty demons. Comrade Engineer Igbini Odafe Emmanuel signed. Okay, so I come back to you now, Koli SN, to respond to some of these issues that have been raised. Let me start with this uh, last one. Uh, um a section 14 b that says that uh, the welfare the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government i don't i mean i mean with all due respect uh, a scholar consular law scholar and also uh, uh you know the, the, a ranking member of uh, professor Mwabweze center for consular law studies um, I don't, as much as we want that, um, to have 
that section justiciable. I don't think it is required for purposes of impeaching the president. It will be a different kettle of fish if IT Jokokoli decides to go to court to enforce it as against the president or the governor. But the National Assembly is a, uh, is a, a, is a power unto itself in certain respect. And to some respect also, the Constitution imbues it with its own uh, vast powers let also refer what you know to buttress the point that i am making i want us to revert by subsection 11 where it defines gross misconduct see means a grave violation or breach of the provisions of this constitution it does not demarcate whether the constitution is uh, uh, whether it's justifiable or not. That if we say that the constitution provides or casts the burden of security of, of the citizens on the government, and it is clear to you unquestionably, if not overwhelmingly that you come within that purview but beyond that it also goes on to say or oh, a misconduct of such a nature as amounts in the opinion of the national assembly to gross misconduct so wide latitude is given to the national assembly and then uh, i can tell you that if it becomes a matter of interpretation I can't second guess the court, but I think uh, the court would be, um, if uh, the National Assembly would be on a very strong wicket if it decides to move against the president, under whom virtually everybody has agreed has spectacularly failed in terms of the primary duty of the government, which is security of life and citizens. Uh, having said that, um, uh, the one of the speakers took issue with uh, we shouldn't speak of owners of Nigeria that he doesn't like it. I don't like it either. But I'm not sure if he sat in a jurisprudential class to understand what you and I were talking about, Hans Kelsey. What, what if uh, a given fact situation is what it is, whether we like it or not, it's a different thing. And the other day, Shore was making a point that uh, P2B for example, who appears to be the flavor of the moment, especially for the youth, he was now saying, oh, look at it, be, he's of not being with some Obas Anjo to, uh, to uh, the hilltop in Minna, and so, so, and so. There are certain facts, um, like I said, it was uh, Dele Momodu who propounded that if you like that theory or use that phrase. But a fact is a fact. <laughs> so, um, virtually everybody uh, even when Atiku came before you people, he was uh, making us to talk that he had support of his boss or Basajo. <laughs> so these are these are facts. It's not ideal, but um, these are facts. But I think it's a passing phase because these people were uh, virtually all of them, with the exception of uh, Jonathan, all fought in the civil war, which uh, it is the event leading to the civil war and this aftermath. That has conditioned Nigeria's how it is today, particularly the absence or the erosion of the true federalism that we had on the on the uh, 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 on, on the basis of which independence was granted to Nigeria. And um, he, he said we need to restore power to the people. For us to restore power to the people, I do believe that in spite of everything we're talking about, there is also a fundamental problem. With the structure of Nigeria, we can't be running a, a unitary system masquerading as a federal structure. It has a lot of problems. The, uh, the, the people are complaining with uh, the anarchists in the East to run people out of town. The governors were practically running scared. Uh, the headsmen 
are running amok in different parts of the place. The governors are completely helpless. I mean, the the other day was talking about good that it should not happen but the the uh, the forest if the governors had more powers as you respect on a more restructured country i believe we don't we don't have this problem and on a more restructured country we will have people owning the country in a a systemic way uh, so that it's not a question of oh somebody seizes the power at the center that sections of the people feel so alienated from it so we need to tinker with the structure in a in a creative way that would help us to restore power to the people because when we talk about this power to the people we're talking about power to the people collectively i had already referred to the fact of what happened during uh, uh during answers those are the things and even now the way nigeria is quite a number of people are supporting the uh the, the presidential candidates based on nothing else not on performance or anything else but because of uh, tribal affiliations you know uh, you know uh, identity politics so we need to work on those things um before we can talk about um having that but i believe it's a gradual process um uh, we've gotten to the wrong bottom maybe we start building up my grandmother, who I had the privilege of staying with for much of my time, he says that those who don't suffer hardly have sense. We have suffered so much <laughs> and suffering enough that we are going to get sense now because, like um, some of the uh, uh, candidates were saying, he said, well, if there's a place where you buy bread cheaper because uh, you're a like man and a man, what's that like? The president please show me let me go and back we have suffered and suffered so much that uh, you know maybe we will usher a better nigeria and uh, part of it is that all of us only collectively knowing that bad governance uh we all suffer the more interestingly uh, by the way we are complaining about the president as we ought to complain but the biggest casualties are in the north including his own casino state you know if it, the, I was telling somebody the other day that the amount of casualties caused by uh, the so-called unknown government in the East is just a tiny, tiny fraction of what is going on that uh, you know, we have the banality of evil. Because every day you say, oh, they killed some uh, 25 people in Zamfara for the other day, they say in Chikawa, they killed uh, 50 people the other day. We have become dumb, numb by the banality of it all. And the, uh, the president is from that section of the country, you know. So maybe, like I said, at the end of the day, east, west, north, and south, we know that we are all losers and casualties of, uh, of an incompetent government or a weak government. So that uh, that will probably, moving forward, inform our choices to get uh, people who will do the job. Okay, Okole SN. Now, and that is self-interest, yes. Okole SN, it's already one o'clock. We have to start uh, winding down very quickly. I would like yes. to take a reaction from Dayo, uh, who says he's from uh, Fagba. Fagba is a section of Lagos uh, suburb. He says, afternoon, Mr. Yes. Abati, the president is confused, helpless, and hopeless in solving the issues of the country. This is what we get when you vote wolves in sheep's clothing instead of facing the security issue. Well, that's a bit harsh. He's in Liberia talking about insecurity. Your house is burning and you are chasing rats. What will be the selling point of APC PDP in 2023? It's only vote buying and agro's intimidations. Nigerians, shine your eyes. And then he says, afternoon, sir, I agree with uh, Mr. Femi Falano that if the Senate was serious, that uh, they should have given, they should not have given six weeks, but seven days. But because of their six week breaks, six weeks break, your house is on fire and you are taking a break. In a serious country, the president, the Senate president, Speaker of House of Reps will be impeached. 2023 Nigerians. It's time to do away with this APC and PDP low grade mines. Dio from Fagba, uh, from Fagba in uh, Lagos. Okay, we just take one more phone call and we call it a day. Who is on the line? 
Hello? Hello? Okay. Your name, your location, but please keep it very brief. We have to go. Okay, my name is uh, Chicks. I'm coming from the Kedja. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to agree with the gentleman that spoke earlier. Uh, I think the time is too late to want to impeach the president. We have a few months, week, months to go. So I think now is the best and uh, you know build the foundation so that the next administration can take off from that place running and he, he can still have time to rewrite history in his favor so let's give him that benefit of the doubt you understand that now the administration is sitting up and they are on their the the on their control and um, they are on, they have the situation under control. You understand? Regardless of whether we agree with their methods and the results that we are seeing or not, but on the, on the uh, long run, in the big picture, we still stand the chance of gaining from the policies and the foundations that this administration okay well on that note i would like to thank all of you who called in today uh, we it looks like we have to round up now but before we do so i would like to thank uh, those of you who joined us including dr bode olajumoke uh, mr michael agbolade dr muiwa olusa Samuel chukuka professor shola adeyemi professor shola fusudo uh, Yomi Badejo Okusoya, uh, my in law. Uh, I can see your name there. Uh, mascot, uh, engineer mascot Ogunjemi Yo, um, and also uh, Dr. Abiodun Adeniye, and uh, also uh, Akintayo Iwilade, uh, who has been there. Otumba Gwenga uh, uh well, thank you very much, all of you, for joining us. And also, uh, I promise you that next week we'll be here again. And uh, we look forward to another exciting edition. And thank you very much, TJK Okoli XAN, for taking time out to discuss the topic for today. And all our callers, those who reach out thank to us on much. Zoom yeah. and Facebook, thank you. Remember, the conversation does not end here. You can still reach out to me on my social media account, and that is at Abati1990 on Instagram, Facebook and other platforms and also at city1051 on all social media platforms for those of you who just tuned in well there's no need to worry you can visit youtube page city1051 and also about 1990 uh, to watch the show and don't forget when you do so to hit the subscribe button and leave comments and don't forget also to tune in next week at 12 noon for another exciting edition of City Talks, my name is Ruben Abate. The show was produced by Charles Flames, Uluwa Shimwa Ditutu, Ayoda Mola Uludara, Uluwa Tobiloba Samson, Abiodun Odunton, and Ezekiel Olaume. The executive producer is Adedoja Allen. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you again next week. Bye for now. The same flavor, extreme poverty, totally unacceptable. Same on the edge experience. Why is it an